I have to tell you this. This is bad. Pastor Randy will straighten me out after the service. Because Janice isn't here to hear this. But the other day I went to, um, if you know Janice, she's a shopper deluxe, right? Um, uh, she uses coupons and everything. You know, I mean, she, she gets deals like nobody's business. And um, so I couldn't help myself the other day. I know I was bad. I was bad. But so she sent me to Safeway. And so I had the grocery list, you know, and, I'm sh- and I'm, I bought everything. Of course, but I... But I went over three pounds on the um, grapes, and I got charged full price. So I, I got in trouble for that one. But anyway, so the the checker, she she I you know she she looks at my receipt and she goes, "Oh, you saved seventy dollars today." And I go, "Wow! Just think how much money I would have spent, or I would have saved if Joe Biden wasn't president." <laughs> She smiled, <laughs> snickered. The guy behind me died laughing, but anyway. <laughs> emotions. We're going to talk about emotions. Uh, going to do a series on emotions. Today, I'm going to talk about anger. <laughs> anger. But uh, this week, um, the next slide, I think, Adam, uh, is it one... Um, When I was praying, the Lord brought me back to the scripture that he gave to me uh, for the beginning of this year. And uh, and I just I just want to just want to refresh your memory about this. Um, First Peter four, seven through eleven. And I, you know, there's a I kind of kind of watch a little bit of the news I, I gave up watching the network news because half the time they're lying. But anyway, on Tuesday, I really felt like the Lord impressed this scripture back upon my heart. First Peter 4, 7, the end of all things is what? Near. Therefore, be clear minded, self control so that you can pray above all Love each other deeply because the love love covers a, over a multitude of sins. I don't know what's going to happen this year, but I, I have a sense of feel, I have a sense that uh, it might get pretty rough. And one of the things we can do, the best thing we could do is love each other. Amen. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has been given to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. This year, I just want to encourage you, show hospitality and then use your gift. And Peter broke it down into two ways. He said, if anyone speaks, he should do so as one speaking the very words of God. Some of you are good teachers. Um, Pastor Randy is going to start a, a class here, and uh, so I, I wouldn't mind starting some classes before church or maybe on Wednesday night, and uh, if you've got something that you would like to teach, uh, let us know. Um, Van, pray with Van. He's praying about starting a Bible study out at his uh, trailer park out there at Sunset Beach, and uh, some of you need to do stuff like that. Because if you speak, uh, do it as, you, as the one speaking the very words of God. Because the person that you're talking to, the God, they're not listening to God, but they'll listen to you. And you're speaking for God when you speak to them. Amen? And if anyone serves, they should do it with the strength of God provides. So if, if you find, I want you to, this 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 year, uh, find some place to use your gift, whatever it is. It might be serving, it might be speaking, but whatever, whatever your gift is, find a place to use it. Use, do it with hospitality, do it with love. Amen? He should do it with all the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. How many believe that the end of all things is near? Yes. Amen. 
Amen. All right. This morning, I'm going to speak on anger. Let's go to the very roots of it, starting with Genesis chapter 4, 2 through 5. And Adam lay with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. And she said, With the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to another, his brother, Abel. And then verse 3 says, Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In uh, the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from uh, some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. Uh, but on Cain, his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Let's pray. Father God, we just ask that you would bless the reading and the preaching of your word today. And by the end of this message, at the end of this service, may everybody be able to say it's been well, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And so, Father, I pray that you would just anoint this message in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I pray that you would anoint their ears that they might hear, O God, and that your word would go straight to their heart, O God, straight from your throne room, straight to their heart. And, Lord, may it change lives. May people be able to say it has been well, it's been good. And, Lord, may lives be changed today because of your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Help me, I pray, O God. Amen. The roots of anger. It's uh, here's here's the thing. I've always been puzzled by this until I studied it, because when I was a kid, um, how many remember going to Sunday school in the flannel graph? All right. I remember Cain and Abel, and they put the little flannel graph. There was Cain, and he, and he brought his, you know, fruits and vegetables and stuff to the Lord. And then there was Abel, and he, you know, he always had his lamb. He brought his lamb, you know, and he sacrificed it. And, and my Sunday school teacher always told me, he said, well, the reason why uh, Abel's was accepted and Cain's was not accepted was because uh, it was a blood sacrifice. Well, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But you know what? That's, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says the reason that it wasn't accepted is says because you, if you would do right, then your offering would be accepted. When, when we come to the Lord... Um, I think I think there's something to be said about um, coming to the Lord, um, uh, honoring Him. If if you know, here's the thing: is, is serving God. God wants you to serve Him out of love and devotion, right? God doesn't want you to serve Him out of obligation. And um, how, how many could just say, you know what, I, I'm so grateful that I'm saved, sanctified, amen. Then when you're saved and you're sanctified, but you know, in this day and age, uh, there, there may be a lot of people who are just kind of playing games with God. I, I think... Was it was all about the attitude of the heart. Cain was like, eh, whatever. Maybe he gave the maybe he gave the first fruits, but there was something wrong with his life. And but Abel, at the same time, he came and he 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 did it out of devotion, out of love. So I just wanted, I want you to look at this. It says his, he was very angry. Sometimes we get mad at God. Um, we get, uh, have you ever had something now for, for you guys that aren't married, but maybe you were married at one time. I'm, I, and you guys that are married, I'm sure that you're, you're not like me. But sometimes when I get mad at something or somebody, you know who I take it out on? I, I do. 
And she's quick to remind me. <laughs> you know, sometimes when something doesn't go right, who do we get mad at? The closest one. Yeah. We get mad at God. So, we're going to talk about anger this morning. Anger leads to murder. Notice this. Then the Lord said to Cain, this is verse 6, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Why is uh, anger such a powerful emotion? Because I believe that there is anger. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this. You can be angry and not sin. But the thing is, the problem is, is with anger, there is, there is a demonic force behind it. And if you do not use anger right, it says that it's sin is crouching at the door and it wants to own you. It wants to possess you. Um, have you seen somebody so angry and so mad they're almost out of their mind? But we have to master it. How do we master it? By submitting to God. Do what is right and you will you not be accepted? The second thing is this about the roots of anger is anger must be dealt with right away. Now Cain said to his brother, Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were out in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to him, where is your brother Abel? I don't know. He replied, am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground and you are under a curse and you are driven from the ground, which opened up its mouth to receive the brothers, your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you and you will be a restless wanderer on the earth. How can anger lead to murder? First, there's disappointment and wounded pride that Cain had, aggravated by envy of his brother, led to anger. And then anger unrestrained, um, brooding sulkingly over imaginary wrong, rouses the, the spirit of revenge. And then revenge seeks out an outlet and passion invents itself in violence and murder. Here's the perpetual uh, struggle between good and evil. Anyone filled with envy and strife is prey to the evil one. You know what I found out about anger? Let, let, me, let me ask you this. There, there are times in my life where God is about ready to do something significant and he's asking me to do uh, to step out in faith. You know, ever happen that? Have you ever had that? Where God is, okay, step out in faith. And okay, I'm, I'm believing you. You talk to me about this and I'm stepping out in faith. I'm praying about this thing to happen. And then invariably, I remember uh, several years ago, all of a sudden past grievances from family members started bubbling up. I was getting mad. And, you know, perceived wrongs over something. I just wanted to go kill somebody. You know, if I had a cat, I would have pulled its tail. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I tried to get to the neighbors, but it was too quick. <laughs> but, but I tell you, then all of a sudden I realized, I said, you know what? Where did this anger come from? That anger was trying to nullify the faith that God was trying to build in my life. It is, and, it, and it's, it's surprising when God starts doing things in your life, all of a sudden is, is all these past grievances just show up. We need to, we need to control them. Am I my brother's keeper? You know how... Um, 
Cain didn't want to take responsibility for the murder. He repudiated responsibility. He refused to accept it or be associated with it. Your brother's blood cries out to me. You know, there's something, and we'll talk about this, but there's an administrative system in the spiritual realm. Both heavenly angels and evil spirits and earthly blessing and cursing that administer consequences to sin. Sometimes God says, well, um, and I don't know, I, I, I've, I, this is how I look at it. This is how I think the Bible looks at it. But uh, I believe that the wrath of God is not personal. It is just a consequence to sin. Right? God loves us. But, you know, no matter how much God loves you, if you climb to the top of this roof right over here and jump over there, into the gravel parking lot, what's going to happen? You're going to break your legs. Uh, so, so the thing is, is the, in, the, in, the, in the spiritual realm, there are angels that go and bring blessing for people who do right. And then there are, there are uh, evil spirits that want to collect on a punishment for somebody who has sin. And the same thing happens in the spiritual, in the physical realm. There are consequences for things that we do. And sometimes we get mad. It's kind of like the old story about the guy that had the flat tire, you know. And he said, oh, you know, I forgot to get up. I forgot to do my devotions, you know. And uh, so he gets in the car and he goes, oh, man, I'm almost out of gas. And then all of a sudden he all a boom, 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 boom. Oh, I got a flat tire. And so he gets out there and he and he he starts to ch he says, oh, God, could you make the? I'm so sorry. You know, hey, why are you punishing me like this? And then he starts changing his tire and then it starts raining on him. Oh, yeah, that's just perfect. See, it's not, it's, the reason you have a flat tire is because, because you ran over a nail. It's not that God's trying to get back to you. But if you, if you, uh, if you let your tires get too thin and you haven't, you know, changed them, you're going to get a flat tire. That's just a natural consequence. But the thing is, is there's something there's there's spirits out there waiting to attach themselves to fits of anger. Psalm 4, 4 through 5 says, Be angry, do not sin. Ponder in your hearts on your beds and be silent. Selah. Think about it. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Number one is this, reflection. Is my anger justified? Does God consider anger a sin? No, God doesn't consider anger a sin. In fact, God created us in his image, and God has, the Bible says that God has gotten angry. And, uh, you know, there is, there is physical effects to, to, to anger. It makes your heart rate go up, your blood pressure, your respiration increases, your body temperature rises, your skin perspires, the mind is sharpened and focused. It's that the constant flood of stress chemicals are associated with metabolic changes that go with an ongoing unmanaged anger can eventually cause harm in many different systems of the body. If you're, if you're always angry, it's not good. But there are times where you need to be angry. True? And it, it, it creates that fight or flight syndrome. It gives your system a whole a pump of adrenaline. But uh, God created you to have anger. The Lord has anger. Job uh, 4.9 says, At the blast of his anger, there perish. Uh, Matthew 12.23 um, 
It says that uh, Jesus, he said, and Jesus entered the temple and drove out and sold uh, and bought, who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Sometimes it is justified. I, I think it's in Mark or something. It has a little thing there. There was a little pathway um, and Jesus blocked that off. But why was he so mad that he overturned the, the, muddy, the, the table of the money changers? Is because it was in the court of the Gentiles. People like you and me, we couldn't come to Jesus, or cut, we, we couldn't come to Yahweh, to God, unless we went to the court of, of the Gentiles. And, you know, so you get in there and you expect, hey, I'm a Gentile. I, I want to. This is before Jesus. I want to come to the Lord. So you go into the court of the Gentiles and it's Walmart's going on in there. Profit making. Probably what? Profit making. Profit making. Yes. So he was rightly angered. And then uh, Mark three, five through six, he looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed because of their stubborn hearts and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched out his hand and it was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot uh, with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Um, Jesus said to them, he said, well, they, 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 this is one of those things where they set it up. They said, hey, you can't do any work on the Sabbath day. We said, if your ox fell in the ditch, I mean, shouldn't you go get it out of the ditch on the Sabbath? Well, yeah. Well, then what's wrong with me with healing this guy? No, that's work. Well, the devil had messed up this guy long enough. It's time he got healed, right? And because of their hardness of their hearts, that made Jesus angry. Can you believe that, that? That God gets angry? Yes. yes. Is it okay if you get angry? Yes. yes. The, right thing. the right thing. For the right thing. Yes. So you can turn to your neighbor and say, it's okay if you get angry. <laughs> but don't sin. He says, uh, you need to, he said, uh, David said, I sat on my, I ponder in my heart, be angry and sin not. I ponder in my heart on my own bed. When you get mad, when you get angry, the first thing you ought to do is, is reflect on it and ask yourself, am I justified in being angry? Could I be wrong here? Why is this making me angry? Is, is, is it my pride or do I have a legitimate claim here? Am I being wrong? Ponder in your heart. Listen to the Holy Spirit. If you find yourself getting angry, take a moment to think about it. Amen? See, anger unchecked leads to sin. Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. God wants you to deal with, his, with your anger. Uh, Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on you while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Submission to God. If we feel that God has been fair to us, unfair to us, then we have a, a place. Uh, we have to uh, place. Um, then we are have... I wrote that wrong. That is grammatically wrong there. So I can't make sense out of my own writing. I tell you. Don't you hate that, Pastor Randy? I tell you. Ah, I think Janice came in here and messed this up. No, no, no. She probably would have corrected. <laughs> I, had a, I had a thought in there. <laughs> Submission to God. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. When you... When you feel anger at first, the first step is, hey, let's wait a sec. Just keep it under control. Let's think about this. Could, why, am I, why am I being angry? 
And if you come back and say, well, this is justified, then, then you need to take appropriate action. But if you're saying, why am I angry at this? Well, this is, this is hurting my pride. I'm not justified in being angry. Maybe there's something I need to deal with. Sometimes we get angry because people criticize us. And why does criticism hurt? Because it has an element of truth in it. It's kind of like this. We're in here practicing. And I'm over there playing the piano, and I'm singing the wrong words. <laughs> and what does Leslie say? Pastor, <laughs> you're singing the wrong words. <laughs> Janice is right. You don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that kind of hurts, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I could say, well, Leslie... I can't think of anything mean to say about Leslie. <laughs> That's terrible. No, it's a good thing. <laughs> but I have, to, I have to look at that and I go, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I'm just glad she didn't say, Pastor, you lost your place in Waymaker again. Redirection. How do I stay out of jail? Redirection. How do I stay out of jail? All right. In, in honor of this point, you can go home and play Monopoly late this afternoon. All right. Redirection. How do I stay out of jail? How do you get that get out of jail free card? Anger becomes murder if it's not redirected. Matthew 5, 21 through 22. You have heard that it said to the people long ago, do not murder and, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject uh, to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. You, you need to deal with your anger before it turns into, a, into murder. Murder starts with anger. One must deal with that anger to avoid murder. Prohibition in verse 21 is not killing in general, but murder, killing that is contrary to the law. Deal with the heart. Notice it in the, in the Sermon on the Mount there, and um, I'll just look it up real quick. But it says uh, in there, he, uh, verse 21 of chapter 5, you know, he talks about that. He said, well, basically, um, you, you have to deal with your heart. Let's say you're going to go, well, I, I don't want get, to get to jail. But if you're angry and if you're in your heart that you want to go out and kill somebody, then you're in sin. Right? That's what he's saying. He said the same thing about adultery. Well, if, if, if you look out there and you say, well, I'm not doing it. I'm not sure like to. Well, Jesus is saying it's the same thing. Yeah. Well, I'm so mad at them, I could kill them. But I'm not going to. If not, unless somebody's looking. If nobody's looking, it's, it's the same thing. If it's in your heart, it's the same thing. He says the same thing about um, adultery. He says the same thing about murder. Um, uh, you know, he, he kind of gets to the heart of issue about divorce, about oaths, eye for an eye. It's a, it's a heart issue. Raka means you empty-headed person, and fool means, uh, he said, you know, you're, you're in danger. You call somebody a fool, you're in, in danger of the fire of hell. Uh, the difference between the two points is negligible. Jesus forbids either. The second thing is anger can cancel your offering. Notice in Matthew 5, 23 through 24, it says, Therefore, if, if you are offering your gift at the altar 
and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave it, leave your gift in front of the altar and first go to be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Well, I, what does that mean? It means that it means that, well, I'm just OK, I'm I, I'm really I'm really mad at somebody or something. It's like it's like last night. We're driving here, and uh, I had done something wrong against Janice. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. Don't ask her. She might tell you, and I don't want her to know. <laughs> but you know, I, 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 I did something wrong. And I said... Uh, I prayed about it, and I said, Lord, forgive me. And I knew I was coming here. I was going to lead the prayer meeting, and I had to get ready for uh, this service today and Deborah's service. And, and then, so as I'm thinking about it, I said, you know what? It's like this. You know, I, I come to God, and I said, well, God, I, will, you, will you forgive me? Sure, I, you didn't do anything to me. You need to talk to your wife. I don't want to talk to my wife. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to talk to her. She thinks I'm a good guy. But I, I could not come to give my offering. I could not give my service until I made things right with my wife. That's what Jesus is talking about. The, the other thing, and this is kind of interesting, the court of accusation in the courts of heaven. He says in verse 25 and 26, Settle matters quickly with your adversary who's taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way. Or he may hand you over to the judge or and the judge may hand you over to the officer or you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth. You will not get out until you have paid the very last penny. There's an interesting book that uh, Dave Hayes, a.k.a. known as the praying medic, wrote. It's called um, it is called defeating your adversary in the court of heaven. And he said this, the court of accusation should be. Uh, used to hear cases that pertain to harassment, oppression, and affliction by evil spirits and nothing else. What, what he thinks that Jesus, and I, I think this is probably true, what Jesus is talking about here is not a physical court, but he's talking about a court in heaven, and there is a court of accusations, and uh, we know that this, as the Bible says, that Satan is the accuser of who? The brethren, right? And so we may have done something, and so uh, evil spirits go around and they say, hey, listen, I've got something here. Well, I can bring this. I can bring this against somebody. I could bring this against Chris. And Chris is over there. He's doing everything that he possibly can do. And he can't figure out, well, I don't know. I, there's, there's a sickness that I have. Or... I financially, I, I can't get ahead. I don't, I don't know what's wrong. Well, sometimes what you can do, or maybe there is a curse against you. And what you can do is you can, in prayer, you can say, Lord, take me to the court of heaven. Now, some people see, probably, Pastor Randy is a seer, and he could probably see it, but I'm not a seer. I just have a thought come to my mind and I pray about it and all of a sudden a thought comes to me and it says, you did this wrong. And the, the difference is, is in this court, you don't, this is not like when you go get your traffic ticket and you're trying to say, hey, I, I judge, I'm innocent. You're not trying to prove you're innocent. You're trying to say, hey, I'm guilty. Because the only thing, because if, there be, if you're being accused of something, of something that's holding something up in your prayer life or a healing or finances or something, 
then you know what you need to do is, is, is go to the courts of heaven. And when you go to the courts of heaven, wherever the accusation is, then what you need to say is you say, hey, my only defense is the blood of Jesus. I have been forgiven. And sometimes the enemy keeps coming back and you have to say to him, say, hey, this is under the blood and you do not belong here. You have no right to harass me in this. No right at all. And you know that the devil likes to trespass. Right? So, um, go to the next slide, Adam. The righteous angels. Are they not ministering spirits sent to serve for the sake of those who inherit salvation? Did you know the angels, look at all the things that angels do, the Bible says. It says um, they rejoice, and I forgot to highlight that one. Rejoice over one sinner who repents. They serve on behalf of God's people. They observe uh, the Christian's co uh, Christian conversation. They bring messages from God. Uh, they bring answers to prayer. Praise God. They appear in dreams to believers. Sometimes they help uh, interpret prophetic dreams and visions. They strengthen God's people in trial. And they protect the saints who fear God and hate evil. They punish those who are God's enemies. And they fight against the demonic. And, the, and you know what? Praise God to this. Carry, they carry the saved to heaven. I remember praying for my dad in that hospital room. I was praying. I said, Lord, send your angels down to minister to my dad. And I just, you know, it just seemed like I caught a glimpse out of the corner of my eye. I felt like the Holy Spirit say, they're not here to heal your dad. They're here to take him to heaven. One of these days when we die, isn't it really glorious that your, your guardian angels is going to be there? Joanna, you have more than one. I know that from personal experience. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but one of these days, that angel has been looking over your life, your whole entire life. Right at that moment, it's going to say, hey, it's time to take you to heaven. It's time for you to see Jesus. It's time for you to see those who have gone on before you are not ministering, are not angels ministering spirits under the heirs of salvation? Let's talk about the court of heaven. I think I got a protocol in the next slide here. Adam, if you want to go to the next slide here. The court of accusations protocol. You just ask the judge to convene court and ask your accuser to appear and ask the accuser accusation to be heard. Agree with the accusation and state that the blood of Jesus is your defense and ask for a verdict from the judge and receive any document you need and then ask that the, the enforce the verdict. That's a little protocol that he came up with. When, but if, you, if you're dealing with something that just doesn't seem like you can't get over it, you just can't get over it, then maybe you should, you should pray and ask, go to the court of accusations and say, Lord, is there some type of accusation out there? And you go, oh... forgot about that say Lord cover this with the blood of Jesus and once you get it taken care of then don't let Satan come back and force the verdict
Rectification. Rectification. That's a big fancy word. just means make it right. Anger. When justified must be rectified. Action in the church is, is binding in heaven. Therefore be forgiving so that you may be forgiven by the Father. Did you know that Jesus said, what you do here, what we do on earth, is what you do here in the assembly is binding in heaven. Three steps to resolve conflict. Matthew 18, 15 through 17. If your brother sins against you and you go show him his fault just between the two of you and he listens to you, you have you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two other as along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, Tell it to the church, and if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as if you would treat a pagan or a tax collector. Let's say I do something wrong to Curtis, which I wouldn't do because he's like twice as big as me. He could kill me. But if I did something wrong to Curtis, and Curtis said, you know, he come, he asked, he, he's come to me one-on-one. -on -one. He said, you know, Pastor, uh, why did you slash my tire on my Jeep? <laughs> well, because I wanted to. <laughs> I want that Jeep. He goes, well, is that? well, if I said, well, I'm sorry, Curtis. Like, it was a weak moment. I'll pay for your tire. We're good. Two tires. Two tires? Two tires? Yeah, it's a four-wheel drive. Two tires. So, uh, but if I say, no, you deserve that flat tire. You go pay for your own two tires. So he says, Yari and Van, why don't you come with me? I need to confront Pastor. He's being naughty. And I'd say, you guys go pound sand. <laughs> well, they say, well, we need to take this in front of the church. You're only funny. You're only funny. No, yes, I'm only funny. I really, I'm not going to do this, Curtis. But then, if it escal if I can't get it solved with just one or two witnesses, why do you, why do you need a, a witness? Because you need to establish what was said. Take it from somebody who's been through church troubles. Make sure you have a witness. <laughs> These two. So, then if, if I don't straighten up, well, you have the right to say, well, you need to go find church somewhere else. I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you, if two or of you agree on anything you ask for, it will be done by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Or I am there also, as the King James says. These... What you do here, see, see the thing is, is um, we can change the root of something. If you change the root, you change the fruit. 
Uh, Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. In other words, what is it? it's, it's the invisible realm. It is the spiritual realm that created everything that is here. Amen? And if you can change something in the spirit... It will change in the physical. Whenever two or three are gathered in my name and agree on one thing, what you do here is binding in the spiritual realm. And if you change in the spiritual realm something, it will change in the physical. See, a lot of times, a lot of us think, well, you know what? If we could just get people to behave, right? Just, you know, my wife says that all the time. If we could just get you to behave. But the thing is, if we can change a person's heart, then their behavior changes. Amen? You have to change something in the physical. I am here not because my mother gave me spankings, but that helped. <laughs> but there were times where she got down on her knees and she pleaded with God that I wouldn't make a life-changing mistake. She changed it in the spirit. And it was binding. Her prayer was binding. And what she bound on earth, it was bound in the spirit. And it was so. I was kept from making terrible mistakes. Forgive and be forgiven. Peter then said, uh, then Peter came up to Jesus and asked, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Or maybe it was seven times 70. It was a lot. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents brought to him, uh, was brought to him. How much is a talent? I believe a talent was one day's work. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. That was millions and millions and millions of dollars. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He owed him 20 bucks. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. And his fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and he had the man thrown in prison until he could pay the debt. And when the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and told the master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Uh, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I have had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should be paid back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you, what? Forgive your brothers from your heart. How you forgive or don't forgive determines your forgiveness in heaven. 
So in your anger, do not harbor unforgiveness against another person. Unforgiveness releases evil spirits who collect grievance and carry out torture in the form of harassment and oppression and affliction. I think the, the thing is about that parable that Jesus is talking about there is, is you have no right to be angry and hold things over people's heads who offend you because you have been forgiven a lot worse. I know some of you. You were pretty bad people. Yeah? And I know this, Jesus forgave you. And if you're going to run around and you're going to say, if you're going to be like the uh, little church lady, wagging your finger at everyone, you've been forgiven much worse. Do you not have the ability to capacity the same forgiveness that Jesus gave you? To forgive someone else. If they offended you, take a brother. Follow, you know, Matthew 18. Let me close with this. Here's some verses out of Ephesians. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold. The Greek is tapas, who has been stealing. You, he who has been stealing must steal no longer, but he must work doing something useful in his own, with his own hands and that he may have something to share with those in need. And then I'll just, just reiterate this again. Just, just, just because you do something here in the physical realm, there are spiritual roots to it. Don't give the devil a place, right? Don't give the devil a place. Deal with it. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for others and binding up others according to the needs that they may benefit to those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be imitators, and then e Ephesians 1 and 2, be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and, and sacrifice to God. Be imitators of God. Get rid of every form of malice. Just remember, any anytime you get threatened, you just feel like, I just want to really get ticked. And I, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Pause. And just think. Has God forgiven me of worse things than what this person has done to me? Be angry and sin not. James 1, 19 through 21. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become what? Angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can, what? Save you save you so with every head bowed and every eye closed I 
how many this morning just said, you know, Pastor, please, please pray for me. I want nobody looking around. And he said, and this is what I'm going to ask for. You can say, you know, I have, a, I have a problem with anger. And I'd like to be delivered of that this morning. I, at, I have a problem with anger. If you have a problem with anger, I'd just like the Lord to help you with that. Just with nobody looking around, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Okay? All right. All right. All right. See those hands? Anyone else? Yes, I see those. I see those. Anyone else? Several people. That only makes, that only just deter or con confirms one thing is that you're human, all right? So let's, let me pray for you, okay? If you have somebody next to you, why don't you reach over and you can hold their hand or touch their shoulder. Let's just pray for them, all right? Father, we just pray, help us to be angry but not sin. And Lord, some of us at times, we have problems with our temper. And uh, Lord, I just ask you to help us. Help us, Lord, I ask that, uh, Father, if there's something in our past, oh God, that triggers something else, Lord, we just ask that, if, if we have a, something in the court of accusations that we need to get cleared, Lord, we just ask you would put it under the blood right now, oh God. And Lord, I just ask that any angry spirit that we might have, Lord, I just ask that you would eradicate it from our lives. Lord, I just pray for all of us, oh God, Lord, that you would remove every form of malice out of our life. And Lord, and when we are tempted to get angry, May we just hit the pause button and be slow to anger. Father, we thank you that you give us great self-discipline and grace. So I pray an extra measure of grace, the, the desire and the power to do your will upon these people. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen, amen. amen.